What's up everyone? This is Prasanna Balakrishnan back again this time for the review of Chennai Super Kings versus Rajasthan Royals. And Chennai Super Kings have won their second game on the bounce. This time a comprehensive win against Rajasthan Royals. And I have with me two very good friends and Rajasthan Royals fans as well. I have Sanchit Desai and I have Sandy Paji. Um I start with you uh, Sanchit. Where uh, where did it all go wrong? Was it the lineup or was it the way you kind of finished towards the end with the bowling or was it the batting? So kind of um, um dissect the way like how you, where it all went wrong from the start well actually to be honest uh, i wasn't wasn't actually confident like most of the royals fans while while chasing that uh, big score I, because i believe that the pitch did have some assist for for the spinners and we saw the ball stopping and coming to the bat and i believe we gave away uh, 15 or 20 runs extra because we saw us conceding uh, i think around 30 in the last two overs I, th- i thought that was magnificent hitting from sam karan at the end and uh, i think lots of extras and unnecessary uh, Uh, conceding unnecessary double runs i think that costed us quite a lot quite a lot and i think that was exceptional running from csk and that is exactly how you approach an innings after after early setbacks and i think that is where we actually lost the uh, momentum in the last two overs and while chasing i think butler butler was from showing some promising signs but uh, it's not always you're not going to always win when after being uh, two or three down in the power play and that problem has been recurring since the start of last season as well so very rarely you win after being 30 for 2 30 for 3 after the end of power play and especially while while chasing a big score against a top quality side like csk and they have proved to be a top quality side and i believe that ball to dismiss josh butler by ravi jadeja wow. that was that was exceptional and i think that sparked the sparked the collapse there and uh, pretty pretty ordinary batting there from the rajasthan royals middle order i thought we were completely exposed by mohin ali and jadeja who were outstanding with the ball and also jadeja who was absolutely brilliant on the field as well he's, he's it's like he's almost everywhere on the pitch wherever you see him and i think that was actually a very spirited performance from uh, chennai super kings we were very disappointed as a rajasthan royals fan especially after uh, losing the toss and then putting up a performance like that but uh those last few hitting by uh, tevatia certainly did bring us some smile on some of our our faces but uh, lots to improve from this particular match apaji uh, coming to the uh, the bowling for marathon royals even though at the end you still gave around like 30 of 3 overs something like that and but you got to 188 and i felt from a batting perspective that we were like 15 20 runs short because it, it was still a good batting wicket how confident were you on chasing 188 and and uh, why did you think it um, all went wrong after that uh yeah exactly i would have been confident had we uh, not lost any wickets in the power play i did say in the uh, the preview show before this that uh, it's key for all rajasthan royals to not lose these wickets in the power play and to lose two one on the last ball before the power play sanju's wicket i think that was uh, the nail in the coffin and um, although i'm very very disappointed with how we um, we batted uh, the bowling again was really good i think we did give probably 20 to 25 runs too many having you on 143 144 after 16 or 17th over and then conceding the 40 runs i think it was in the three wickets uh, in the last three overs where you lost the four wickets uh, it, it was a bit bad and uh, and i said uh, bravo took the momentum away from rajasthan right at the end and i think that came into our innings and I, I was very disappointed. I think even Shivan Dube today, um, you know, he could not get the runs. That put the pressure on uh, Butler, and then Butler, you know, got done by a beauty from Jadeja, and then it was game over. So realistically, uh, after nine or ten overs, I kind of thought the match was going to go the wrong way because uh, I just didn't see where we would score the runs. Soon as Butler had gone, uh, you know, I'm not 100% confident on Morris or uh, or Miller. with their past uh, innings how they go about yeah they they can change the game but i really think we we really missed that trick and i think a couple of changes will be due definitely number 4 position which is very important okay i'll kind of show, showing the score card here i'm pretty sure both of you can see it yeah, yeah. okay so if you if you actually look at that score card no one actually stupid but like he was standing like a lone man show 49 of 35 and then I thought uh, Dubey started a bit decently, got two fours, but he no one really carried on, and it was like David Miller got out, and it was Parag, and it was just like an easy collapse, and that really made it easy for Chennai. I mean, apart from the ball to dismiss Butler from Jadeja, none of the balls were actually like did any 
anything off the pitch. They were just like batsmen trying to go for shots. None, none of them connecting and they were going straight to field. I'll come to you, Pardi, on this one. Um, I mean, what's exactly the problem with Sanjay Samson? I mean, it seems to be a recurring pattern every single year. He has won great innings at the start and then he kind of ghosts away. I mean, it's a different thing where you have one big innings and then every other game consistently say, you may not score big, but at least say like a 30 of 20 or a 25 of uh, 15, something like that. But it's not the yeah. case with Sanjay Samson. One game he goes big and then the other game he completely ghosts away. I mean... I mean, yeah, what's the yeah, problem as with I said, that? Uh, as I said, it, it, it's definitely uh, a weakness, uh, whether that's mentally or emotionally, how he's dealing with this uh, big score. Is he on a serious high and then goes down on a serious low uh, in the next game? We don't know what that is, but uh, it's a massive problem today. As I said, the shot that he got out with, 5.5 overs ground when we were up with the rate, uh, it was a disastrous um, decision. Uh, there's no uh, coming back or saying anything any less. He could have just basically played the power play over, uh, stayed in for another two guys. Josh was easily scoring the runs on the other side, so just knocked it around, stayed in till that ninth or tenth over, and then kicked on. But I don't know what possessed him to play that shot, and uh, that's something that he's got to really rectify in his game quite quickly. Otherwise... Um, this season is going to go very downhill very quick for us because other than Josh Butler, he's our other match winner. Now we don't have Stokes. Now we don't have Stokes in the team. It's 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 really, really those two. And then your bits and pieces, players that can uh, step up into certain games. And then, uh, but the, the actual match winners, you know, we had those three and uh, losing Stokes, that's a big blow for us because I ideally would like Stokes to come in at four. So I think Rajasthan Rose might have to start looking at this position where if they lose an early wicket in the power play, they protect Sunju and Sunju comes in after the power play. That gives them the uh, the chance of having him around from four to 12. I think uh, having a fixed position for Sunju at three, as soon as they lose the power play, uh, within the power play, I don't think is a good decision by uh, Rajasthan Rose management. Um, Sanjit, would you can um, because there are games coming thick and fast. You play your next game on 22nd against RCB, and then again just two days later against um, um, I think it's KKR on um, the Saturday 24th. So games are coming thick and fast. So like, um, do you think Liv uh, probably Liam Livingston would have um, made an impact on this game compared to I mean, but who would you who would you have dropped for? Because Miller in the last game you saw he played a brilliant knock and he. Almost took you over the line, which was eventually finished off by Morris. But uh, what changes would you like to see um, uh, them bring in for the next game against uh, RCB? Because we, you're coming up against RCB side who are top of the table. The, the heads are high. They are playing some very good brand of cricket. They've got brilliant players and Maxwell and Abedi Williams are hitting form. And the bowling is also fantastic. So, so how do you approach that kind of a game? And certainly what kind of changes would you make? Well, to be honest, uh, before this game, I honestly didn't see any any reason to change our particular winning combination. I thought the team selection was spot on, given the way we played in the last game. I th I think uh, I'm not sure if we are going to field the same similar kind of eleven in the next game against RCB. I believe that there there is going to be a couple of changes. Uh, if I if I if it was up to me, I would actually have three changes in my eleven. I thought I think Manan Vora. I think he's a pretty elegant batsman, but he's not able to carry on after. After scoring those beautiful uh, boundaries, he's not able to put consistent amount of runs, and I think that was the key problem with him in in Punjab as well. He did have an odd uh, 50 plus runs game, but he was not able to give it consistently. So I think that is what we are lacking, and I believe uh, it is high time that uh, Manan Vora was given a good good set of games, but he wasn't uh, he was not uh, showing any promising signs. So I believe uh, someone like SSV Jaiswal would. Uh, would fit in really well at the top of the order because that would also give us that extra bit of flexibility with left hand right hand combination at the top of the order so i think that is one change we, which we could be looking to explore and next change is a bit obvious one i think it's shivam dubey i believe uh, since uh, dubey is not bowling i, I think uh, dubey was included as an all rounder and he's certainly not delivering as a specialist batsman to be honest so if he's not bowling then i don't see any reason to have him in the 11. I believe someone like Mahipa Lomro, who has had a good good uh, domestic season so far, I think he could come in in that middle order slot. And I believe that he did have a good game against uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore last season in the day game, which we which we lost. I think he scored uh, 50 off 
of 28 29 balls so uh, i think he would do really well against against the likes of uh, yuzvendra chahal and shahbaz uh, against the spinners so i'm not quite sure about his ability to play against the spacers but i believe uh, rcb would like to dominate uh, our batting batting order with uh, by attacking us with the spin so putting someone like mahipal lomror in place of shivam dubey would be an ideal choice for for me and my third change would be i believe that three three left arm seamers is not going to work us in the longer and it did work against delhi capitals but it's high time that we include a spinner uh, in that particular 11 because we see the likes of glen maxwell in that middle order we see the likes of ab de villiers who could just smash any baller out of park and he has they have done it consistently so i believe that these two players ab de villiers and glen maxwell they do start off slowly against spinners so if we could just uh, include include uh, someone like mayank markhande or even shreyas gopal Who who might not have a uh, decent form right now, but he does have a good record against the uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore. So if we if we could just uh, fit in one uh, one spinner in place of one of the left arm seamers, I think that would be an ideal eleven. I would like to uh, go in with against RCB. Now, Pati, I'm speaking about uh, Manan Vora as well. Um, you said we all said he's not consistent. The problem today was he had a success from Karan, and the next ball he's kept Dhoni specifically kept a fielder there. and it's basically the same ball and he's for he basically fall he fell for the bait and yeah. i mean like it's those kind of simple things where things let you down and and he also as he said shares gopal and would you would you agree with the changes he brought or do you have something else in mind uh no uh i say i can't have shares gopal playing uh, unfortunately uh, he's had so many chances he's never for me he's never stepped up so uh shreyas kopo definitely a no no um maybe mike mukande comes in i do uh, i i think we really like kartik tyagi i think if we get kartik tyagi in that will give us a bit of flexibility we could even drop fizz uh which i don't want to do uh but then we could drop fizz and then basically play an extra an indian player uh but uh, i don't really think uh, shreyas kopo definitely um at one uh, kd would not be the solution maybe at uh, delhi or kolkata i would definitely have uh, have a look at getting gopal maybe back in on my kande but definitely not uh, shreyas gopal at one kd but uh, i think kartik tyagi is probably the the bowler that we need to yashashvi to be fair i rather have parag up the top and yashashvi at four i know yashashvi is the left hander but again we cannot afford to lose any wickets in the power play and i think that's uh, such a big problem for us having yashashvi up the top uh, with his inexperience um, and he gets out quickly we'll be back to this uh, situation where uh, sanju samson comes in uh, from the fourth or fifth over and that's something that we can't afford to have so i said at the start of the ipl parag should open parag should just may say look your main job is to stay in and get through the power play and uh, we will need to get to the power play without losing any wickets by that time joss will have his timing in place and then if joss were to get out between 10 and 11 to 10th or 11th over then uh when you comes in uh and and that i think is where we probably need to get get to because i think we are losing the games in the early stage of the uh, batting and uh i can't see how um uh, that's going to change because i say uh, i agree with sanjit where manan vora gets in uh and then gets out to a stupid shot um sanju samson tries to play a stupid shot when he doesn't need to play it and then that leaves uh shivam dube then puts all the pressure on josh butler and that's the reason why josh really got out today because um shivam dube was doing nothing so uh, I, and if he's not bowling why is he in the team that's what we've got to we've got to kind of think about so shivam dube definitely out uh my paul ombro definitely in because you could then get him to bowl a couple of the spinning overs as well the 16 that um ryan parag cost us in that one over that did also change that momentum around for uh, chennai because that gave them the 16 runs but we fought back but right at the end it was a problem so uh definitely i don't think we can drop uh, sakaria sakaria is the main bowler today and as i say he proved himself how well he bowled uh and adikat was unlucky in the third over Uh, again quite a few edges that went for four which really cost him 14 or 15 runs of that that over but otherwise he he bowled well and he scored 20 24 25 with the bat so um, again that he bowls well because we never had a an indian bowler that can bat a bit so if uh, jdev can keep his uh, uh form with the bat as well uh, that will be quite important but yes yeah, three changes i i think are a must for uh, rajasthan rolls in the next game And as you see the scorecard as well. I mean, 
we had Chennai Super Kings batsmen, they got starts, but we were, you were picking them off um, at crucial intervals, like uh, the one where Moin Ali was, he was, going, he was going well, he was picked up by Tawati. And then Chetan Sakaria with three massive blows, the ones of Raina, Raidu, and obviously Dhoni, who was starting to open up a bit. But unfortunately, at the end, Mustafa Zurraman, um, he actually, I think he bought a decent last over before his last ball went for a six, but um, sometimes that happens. And let's end off on a positive. Let's end off on a positive. How good is this kid, Chetan Sakaria? I mean, he came in as a, a bowler no one expected to perform. And I think this year has been the the, uh, the tournament of the um, unexpected. We saw Asha Patel earlier, and now we're seeing Chetan Sakaria. I mean, look at his economy, it's just nine apart. Um, for the, for the bowlers, for a bowler who bowls completed his four overs, three wickets, and he's just given nine runs, and he's bowled nine dot balls as well. So that's a pretty um, wonderful stat. And uh, how do you, how how much do you see this kid grow in the future? Well, certainly a lot because uh, considering that he has made his debut on a surface like Wan Khade where where it has no respite for the ball as let's face it most of the time so credit where credit is due I think he's a fantastic bowler and a very intelligent bowler as well I think I think uh, his best ability is the way he mixes his uh, pace and uses the variation more uh, to get the wicket deliveries because we have seen most of the ballers who who come into the uh, IPL they they have a good first game but then they get carried off carried away with the with a bowling uh, bowling uh, in a very uh, constant pace. So I really like the way uh, Chaitan Sakaria is mixing his pace and using variation well and balling according to the batsman's weakness. So that is where I think uh, we have uh, unearthed a gem I think in Chaitan Sakaria and I'm definitely looking forward to see how well this kid grows because we have seen that Rajasthan Royals do lack uh, an Indian Indian uh, bowling core because that is that is our weakness weakness ever since 2018 when we came back into the into the IPL. So if we could have a Chetan Sakaria delivering such kind of performances uh, week in week out, I think that is only going to help us uh, get better and better as the season season progresses. And as uh, Sandy Sir said that uh, Unarka did have a good good time I ex- and was quite unlucky in the third over. And it's really good to see that uh, Jayde Unarka starting off the season really well as well. So it is uh, I think bowling wise uh, we have no no uh, we. Have have, we are not that actually worried because uh, we are getting those crucial wickets at, at at the interval and I think that is where we have to give credit to Chennai Super Kings because they never let that intensity drop off even after those crucial wickets which we saw happen happening uh, with Rajasthan Royals after Josh Butler's wicket the intensity was all down so I think you have yeah. to give credit to the way CSK batted even after losing those key wickets they didn't uh, drop off their intensity and then that's why they managed to reach the total of 188 and I believe that, that was a similar kind of approach that they used in the first match as well against Delhi Capital. So I think we could learn a lot from this particular match, especially in the way how we approach our run chases. And I think it's be- best if we learn not to panic in the power play because losing wickets uh, in the power play is a massive concern since the uh, 2020 season. And if we could just, even if we uh, score, I think, less than 40 runs in the six overs without losing a wickets, I think that's a big win for Rajasthan Royals because with the likes of players that we have, I think we could uh, catch up with the run rate very quickly. So it is very very much key for, for us to not lose the wickets in the power play. And that is going to be the... Uh, it is going to be interesting to see how we approach in the upcoming base because two games against Bangalore and Kolkata. Kolkata, I'm not sure what to expect because we don't have a good time against them. It's been very poor since 2018, the record. I believe we only won one time in, in the last five games, just like the Delhi Capitals record. So, and uh, RCB tabletop is brilliant in form and it is going to be really difficult. But I think these are the games where you need to come back hard and prove it to the league that uh, uh, what kind of a team we are. So, I think. Uh, the best thing working for Rajasthan Royals is that uh, we could. Uh, there is no expectations right now, and this is the perfect time for the for the underdogs to arrive on the pitch. And I think that's where uh, Royals thrive really well. So I'm really hoping to see us uh, coming back in the in the upcoming games and hoping to get the crucial wins that we need. Yeah, you Sorry, can, I, I, you I, can I, yeah, I agree with Sanchit there, and he, he's yeah. he's hit it right on the head. Right, really, we can't panic. Uh, panic with the the batting. I think the batting cost us. The bowling. To be fair, we've taken seven to eight wickets again again today. So the bowling wise, we 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 did well. Our fielding was pretty good today as well. So those two elements um, give me some uh, present. 
I don't see RCB as a good team myself. I think they are, they've been very lucky again. They've won a lot of the tosses and they've that's gone for them uh, quite a bit. So put RCB underneath the pump and uh, we could we, we could turn that turn this around. I think this IPL is proving that every team can beat every team. So nobody expected us to beat Delhi Capitals. We won that game. Today, we probably were slight favourites going into this match, especially once we won the toss and they, we got them down to 180. But again, Chennai... They've got that player, which is a Moin Ali. And the Moin Ali, uh, again, with Jadeja there, you've now got a batter, a bowler, fielder. You know, you've got that base covered of uh, your number three position. Before, uh, when you were playing CSK, you could see uh, where they, they can't knock the runs, especially in the power play. Now you have Moin Ali with his significant timing and ability to hit the long ball. Uh, I think that was a very, very good um Signing for CSK, and uh, I'm a, I've always been a big Moin Ali fan because he's a local boy to me, and uh, I've always thought that you know um, uh, RCB did not use him correctly. So uh, in a way, uh, Chennai uh, they deserve to win the game today. Not nothing but more respect to them because uh, you know they got the the runs on the board, and then they've got the match winners in uh, Moin Ali and uh, Jadeja on the Mumbai wicket, which is not an easy feat. Okay, thanks Thanks for your time, uh, Sandeep Padi and Sanjay Desai. Before going, I would like to drop off your um, socials on YouTube as well because I believe both of you have your own YouTube channels where I discuss cricket. Uh, Sanjay, uh, you can probably drop off your YouTube socials. I will leave a link in the description below and you can obviously view them. Um, give them a nice like and sh- subscribe to the channel. And yeah, Sanjay, yeah. you can probably tell what what's the about. <laughs> now you're brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant, Rosanna, and thank you for all your work you're doing with the fans forum as well. It's so much appreciated. We love having you on our on our channel as well, and just carry on the good work. Let's grow together. Thank you, Paji. Thank you, Sanchet, once again for accepting this, and good luck for next game. And you know who I'm supporting for as a CSK fan. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.